Well, spring has finally arrived, and it's a great time for us to consider pruning our crepe myrtles. And it's a great time for two reasons. One is we've passed the most severe part of the winter, and if there were any winter dieback, it would be very visible. The second reason is there are no leaves, so it's very easy for us to see the branch structure of our plant. Now, before we get started, we probably should look, uh, review some of the common tools that we need to pr before pruning our uh, crepe myrtle. First off, you probably need a very nice pair of leather gloves. Second, you really need a good pair of hand pruners or hand shears. I also find it very helpful in pruning crepe myrtles to have a pair of loppers. Uh, essentially, it's a pair of hand shears with longer lever arms. And it's kind of optional, but I find it very useful is to have one of these saws with uh, the teeth uh, kind of exposed. This tool can work its way into this crown very easily. In contrast to our bow saw, which I really can't get into the interior of that plant. So these are some of the common tools that you likely need for this project. We're going to use two pruning techniques to prune a crepe myrtle. One is renewal pruning and the other is selective thinning. So renewal pruning, what is it? What we do is we're looking to remove entire branches or stems all the way to the ground level. So this branch is uh, it's more than what we need for this particular plant, plus it's bowing out from the plant. So all we're going to do is use our loppers and we're going to get it as close as we can to the ground and now we're going to simply cut. We can also use a saw for renewal pruning and again the objective is to simply get cut the branch off as close as we can get to the soil level. The other technique that we want to use is selective thinning and that simply involves removing a lateral branch all the way back to its point of attachment. So we're going to follow this branch back to its point of attachment and we're going to make a very clean pruning cut. This particular branch is a very good example of why we use uh, selective thinning. This branch is starting on one side of the plant and then it's crossing back through the center. So it's causing lots of conflicts in this plant. So we're going to remove this using selective thinning. Using these two techniques of renewal pruning and selective thinning, we're going to go ahead now and prune the rest of this crepe myrtle. Many people find the seed head objectionable on crepe myrtles, so if you feel that way, there's no problem in just snipping that off and uh, be done with it. Well, we're just about done. One more cut. And notice that we've achieved our objective of maintaining the natural habit of the crepe myrtle using those two techniques, renewal, pruning, and selective thinning. Now, the majority of people in the state simply top their plants at about four or four, five feet. They just cut all these branches off, and it really makes the plant look very ugly in the wintertime. Overall, this pruning project took us about five minutes, and we removed about that many branches from this plant. We achieved our objective of maintaining the natural habit of this crepe myrtle using those two pruning techniques, renewal pruning and selective thinning. To learn more, contact your county extension agent and follow the links in this section.